Hello designers, Missy Meyer here, and today by special request I am doing a tutorial that will show how you can create a template for your promo images using GIMP. Now if you don't already have GIMP, which is a photo editing program, you can go to GIMP.org right here, download a copy, it's totally free, so download, install, and you're ready to start designing immediately. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create a new workspace to build our template in. So I'm going up to File, New, and because this tutorial is specifically for Design Bundles designers, I'm going with 1500 pixels wide and 1000 pixels high. That is the recommended size at Design Bundles, but this is a really handy size. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the full shape. This is a, it's a nice little rectangle that I, a lot of marketplaces will take for your promo images. So no matter where you're selling, chances are you will be able to use this same promo image for a bunch of different shops. The most important thing I want to have on there, besides the design itself, is I want to have my logo in there. So the nice thing about GIMP is you can actually drag and drop. I've got uh, an SVG on my desktop right here. I'm going to drag it in drop it on my workspace and then GIMP wants to know what size I want this little guy to be at. I've got rulers along the sides of my artboard here uh, starting at 0 down to 1000 pixels high and across the top 0 over to 1500 pixels wide. So I can kind of use my ruler here to see maybe about 250 pixels high would be a nice size for my logo to be in there. Not too small, not too big, easy to read, but not in the way. So I've got it in there at that size. I want to move it around now because having it exactly in the center, not so good. So I'm going to click here on the Move tool. This is the plus sign with the little arrows all over it. And then I can just click and drag and move my logo all around my workspace. Now you can put your logo wherever you want, but I recommend having it in a corner. Now whether you choose a, a bottom corner or a top corner, totally up to you. I think for this one I'm going to go upper left, just kind of has a nice feel to it. The upper left, it was calling me. Alright, so now I want to put like a rectangular bar behind my logo. Maybe I'll go across the top or maybe I'll go along the side. It's going to be a nice place to kind of connect my logo in with the rest of the design, and it's where I can put the file formats that my product comes in. So uh, you've got a layers panel over here on the side. If you've worked at all with Photoshop or Illustrator or Inkscape, you're probably familiar with layers already. Um, I have two layers in this project so far. One is the white background, and one is the logo that I just dragged in. I want to create a layer behind the logo but in front of the background. So I'm going to click on the background layer and then I'm going to click this button right down here. It looks like a sheet of paper with a plus on it and that's going to create a new layer. Um, it, it's going to give me this create a new layer window and I'm just going to leave this named layer 1. You could name this anything you want. You can rename your layers later if you want to kind of tidy things up. I'm going to leave it. I'm cool with layer 1. And so now I want to make a rectangle. So I'm going to choose the Rectangle Selector tool. It's this very first tool in the toolbox up here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle behind my logo. And I want to fill that in with a solid color now. You've got a color picker right here with a foreground color and a background color. And if you click on either one of these, it'll pull up the color picker. And so I've I've already selected this uh, kind of nice greenish tealish color that I think is going to go nice with my big phony logo here. So OK, I'm going to go to Edit and I'm going to fill my rectangle. I have options. I can fill it with the foreground color or a background color or I could fill it with a pattern. I'm going to choose the foreground color, which is, it's showing me a little preview right here of that teal color I chose. And boom, done. There's a, a nice rectangle, nice color, goes with the logo, looks lovely. Now I don't want that rectangle selected anymore. I'm going to go to Select, None. And so you can see how it looks there. So now I want to put in my file formats. So I'm going to change my foreground color to, let's go with a 
dark gray. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to choose the text tool, this letter A, and click anywhere on here. And you can see I've already chosen the font Succulent. It's one of my fonts. Of course, I'm going to use that. But you can choose any other font you want if you want Arial. I've got all my Arials, you know, whatever font you want to choose. I'm going back to Succulent. And then I'm just going to type out SVG and PNG and what else, what else, what else, DXF and maybe EPS are the file formats that I'm going to use for this. Once you've got everything typed out, you can again use your move tool, that little plus, click and drag and bring it over and boy, these guys are a little small, huh? I should make them better, bigger. So I'm going to the text tool and I'm going to select this text. Now if you click anywhere in the text and highlight, you can see which letters are highlighted. They get these little yellow boxes around them. But if you just click one thing and then on your keyboard hit Control A, that will select all. So you don't have to go through the, the trouble of clicking and dragging exactly so to get all of the letters in there. Just pick any one letter, Control A to select all, you've got everything selected. So you can either use the up and down arrows to make your text a little larger, or you can just manually type in, let's see what 120, let's go a little larger, 130 pixels looks like there. And then I'm just going to move that in place. There, I like it. Easy cheesy. Now if you were not worried about watermarking at all, you're pretty much done with your template. All you need to do is drag and drop your design into the big open area and you're good to go. But I am going to talk briefly about watermarks here. Now there's an argument going on these days about whether or not you really need watermarks. They've been used classically to keep people from tracing your design. And I totally get that. It totally stinks when someone grabs your promo image, traces your design, puts it on a shirt, you don't get a sale, they're not using a licensed copy of the design, it's, it's bad and gross all around. But some people have the opinion that tracers are going to trace no matter what you do, so you should really concentrate on making your promo images as sharp and clear and beautiful as possible to draw customers in. I happen to think there's a happy medium between the two. I think you can do a couple of watermarking techniques that make it hard for tracers to trace your design, but also don't make it hard for your customers to see the design and to really get an idea of what it looks like. So I'm going to talk about a couple of those briefly here. One thing you can do is you can do a text watermark. So I'm going to use my text tool and I'm going to pop in here just above layer one. Actually, I'm going to go behind layer one. And remember, layer one is my teal colored bar. So my watermark is going to go behind that. And for a text watermark, I'm just going to be a goof and type out the word watermark. And then I'm going to select one character, do control A to select all, control C to copy, and now I'm just going to paste in the word watermark. A whole bunch of times. I'll get my move tool. I'm going to scoot this up so it all fills in back here. And then I, that's really distracting, but that's primarily because I'm using a dark color of text. So if I go back into my text tool, select any character, Control A to select all, and then I have a little color picker right here. So I'm going to pick a light gray. and go back to my move tool. So there's a really subtle watermark in the back there, and especially if you're putting your design not in solid black, but if you're using a color on your design, if it's a color that's closer in tone to the shade of gray you're using for your watermark, that's going to make it hard for tracing software to understand where the edges of the design are. Now you don't have to use text for this kind of watermark. You could use a pattern if you wanted. Uh, I have a pattern actually at the ready, so I'm going to 
hide this watermark layer just by clicking on the eyeball on that layer. The layer's still there. I can bring it back if I want it. We're just not seeing it right now because there's no eyeball on it. And here I have a pattern. This is just a transparent PNG pattern that I've named watermark. Drag and drop it in there. It's kind of this smeary watercolor painty pattern. And then I'm going to lower the opacity because it's, it's really dark black right now. I'm just clicking on the little downward arrow here on the opacity bar. You could also type in a number here if you wanted to. If you wanted it 25%, you can just type that in. You're good to go. And again, this is just, it's, it's meant to have a little contrast in your background, but not to really draw the eye too much away from your design. That contrast in the background just makes the edges of your design harder for auto trace programs to, to see where those edges really are. So I'm, I'm going to stick with this. It's kind of cool. It's like a leopard print ish thing, kind of funky. All right. So now I'm going to bring my design in. I, I can save this. If I go to file, I'm going to go to save as, and you can call it any old thing you want. I'm going to name this shop template. Uh, as you can see here, it wants to save in XCF format. That's GIMP's file format, and that's totally cool to save with. And now whenever I want it, I can open it up and it's ready to go. So when you want to use it, you can again easily drag and drop an SVG design right in there. I happen to have this one labeled design. And again, it's going to want to know what size you want to put it in here at. So let's take a look at the, the, the space we have available to put it in. We know that we have a thousand pixels tall because we've got the entire height of our design here. And then our bar here goes to about 250 pixels to 1500 pixels. So that's 1250 wide. So let's just say if we're dealing with a square, we're dealing with a square of about a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels ish. I want to go a little smaller than that. I'm actually going to go 900 pixels wide. See how I like that. Because you can't be afraid of having a little blank space in your design. It gives you a little breathing room around the outside so that it's it, if, it, if you're not filling up the entire template with the design, it's a little more relaxing to look at. So I, I like this size. This is a lovely fancy design as you can tell. And I can just put it right in there. And there you go. I've, I've used a color for this. I've saved it in a color specifically so that it's getting kind of close-ish to the gray of the background. So it's going to make it, again, a little harder to trace. But I'm not putting a watermark over the top of the design. You can do that if you want to. You can, in fact, take watermark here, move it over the top of the design. Or if you want to do your text watermark, you can move that over the top of your design. Woo, that's pretty bright, so I'm going to lower the opacity on that. But you can see why it's, it, it's tough when you have a design with a watermark over the top. It, it makes it immediately, as you can see here, harder to really see what the design is. Even, and, you, and you have to like make it really faint. And even then, this is 20% opacity, and it's still, I think it's really drawing from... I think it's really taking away from the design. So I'm going to move that watermark back underneath the design. I'm going to bump it back to a full 100%. I just, I, ugh, I like that better. That's, that's me. You may not like it better. You may like it better. Oh, look at that. I'm combining both the pattern and the text, and I kind of don't hate it. It's kind of weird. I'm going to stick with that. But there you go. Uh, you, th this is an easy template that you can then use for all your designs. You've got your logo on it. You've got a consistent look. If you have a consistent color scheme, it's really going to make customers recognize your products. And if they've bought from you before, they'll look at your design and say, hey, I recognize that. I know that designer. I've used their stuff. It's really good quality. I am very confident buying from them again. And again, you don't need to have this bar down the side like I have if you want. Let's make another bar. We can just go across the top. 
And I'm going to change my color back to this teal and fill that bar with that foreground color. Oops. I want a separate layer for this. Ha ha! All right, we'll fill that foreground color there. Move our design. It's going to come down. And then we want to do our text again in gray. But this time we're going to go across. So we're going to say SVG, EPS, PNG, DXF. Select one, select them all, make them a little bigger. Yeah, still, I like 130 here. Move them up. Kind of balance them against the other side. And there's doing it the other way. And there are a ton of different things you can do. You can have your bar across the bottom or across the right side, or you can make a, a, a white square in the center and have color all the way around it. The, the world is your oyster on this. This is just a really simple, basic example, but this should hopefully give you the tools that you need to build a template that you like and that your customers like and that really increases your sales. All right, thanks for joining me and uh, happy designing.